Hi to everybody. Here we go. Is it working? It says it's going live and it says we're live. Hello, everybody. My name is Matt Johnson here on this fine, fine Thursday evening. Didn't even know what day it was till a few hours ago when one of my friends called me and was like, it's Thursday. I was like, it's Thursday? No clue. Been working all day. Hey, um, here to hang out with you. Not reviewing wedding films today. No, no, I've got some, some, uh, editing premiere pro editing secrets to share with you and uh by secrets i mean whatever you want me to tell you then i'll tell you about premiere pro so yeah you got questions about premiere pro you got questions about video editing got questions about anything yeah click so post them in the chat let's talk about it um also want to let you know that my course video editing unlocked it's going to show you how to become a pro at premiere pro and easily learn how to quickly edit in the program is currently on sale until midnight Pacific time tonight. So only a few more hours and it's going away. That's right, it's just going away. Okay, the it's on sale right now. You can check it out, it's linked down in the video description or it pinned to the top of the chat. If you wanna check it out, it's on sale right now for 33% off for Black Friday, but this course is only available for a limited time. Literally tonight, I'm closing the cart, it's going away. You ain't gonna be able to get this thing till next year sometime, you gotta wait for it. So if you wanna now, you can check it out and there's a payment plan, just try it out. Got a full 60 day money back guarantee on it. So try it out, if you like it, cool. If not, you can, you can ask me, I'll give you a refund. So it's cool. YouTube is telling me creators earn more money inserting ads. Give it a try. It's like, oh, I can just click a button now and insert ads in my live stream. I can just just do this to you guys. Like, watch an ad. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. That's scary. That's kind of cool. Oh man. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So I'm just here for you guys. Here to answer your questions. Here to talk. Uh, who's here anyway? Zavas says, hey. Julio says, oh, secrets. Yeah. I assume that's how you said it. I didn't think it was like a, oh, secrets. It was like, oh secrets that's my hope anyways oh man thank you sharish k um ib says how can i get ai to edit the whole project for me so i can actually enjoy my life you know we joke about that but like we're already kind of getting there at least like you look at the photo world and there's ai photo editing that's getting pretty good and i mean now you don't even need to do stuff you can just type what you want into an ai text image generator and it's like here you go here's your uh, photos and like they're already doing that with video and it's still very rough, very proof of concept right now. But the fact that you can literally type in like teddy bear running and it's just like makes a teddy bear that's running. It's like, oh my gosh, like soon we're just going to be able to type like wedding video. And it's just here's a wedding video. And it's like, I don't know who that couple is or anything like that, but I'm watching a wedding video. It's crazy, crazy to think about what we're getting to here. Oh, man. Let's see here. What, is, uh, what does Luke Smith say? Your new proxy workflow doesn't work for me. Oh, no. Slow-mo plays back all choppy. I had to revert back to Premiere Pro 2021. Any ideas? Um, if it's playing back a slow-mo choppy, I would first of all make sure that it's exporting the proxy presets at the right frame rate. The, it's exporting the proxies at the right frame rate. If, if it isn't, it could be that it's trying to set the proxy files to a frame rate that's different from what they should be, especially if you try to interpret the footage. So look into that, try to figure that out. Uh, make sure that it's making the proxies the same frame rate. That's that's my thinking there. Um, NSW Zuzia, Matt can't keep secrets, I can't. No secrets here, sorry, can't do it. Too, too, uh, way too open. Don TV, how come I always miss the wedding of the month reviews? I'm sorry if you do. Um, if you don't want to miss them, normally there'd be a link in the description, but I took all the links out except for the link to my course, Video Editing Unlocked, which you can click on the link down below and check it out. But if you want to be notified whenever my next month's live wedding film review live stream will be, um, I don't have a date for it yet picked out or anything like that, probably mid-December. But um, if you go to Git dot who is Matt dot com. So G E T dot who is Matt dot com. That's going to put you on my email list. And then I send out an email a day or two before every live stream. I try to be earlier than that, but normally it falls like a day or two before. And I send out an email saying, Hey, here's this month's live stream. Here's the submission form. So that way you know the date, you know the time, you can sign up for it. So get dot who is Matt dot com for that. <clears> hmm. <throat> 
Eric says, how do you keep your sanity after a decade of editing videos? Please send help. It, I, I completely understand. It is a struggle. I think a lot of it comes down to getting significantly more efficient and continuously trying to learn how to be more efficient. So for me, I'm currently in the process of learning DaVinci Resolve, which is, my goodness, what a monster of a program. And like, there's a lot of similarities to Premiere Pro, but there's also a ton to learn too. So it's really, really interesting and fascinating. But um, aside from like editing faster and learning how to do that, which FYI, my video editing unlock course, which is linked down in the description, can really show you how to do that to save time. I'm also a really big fan of outsourcing. Like I started outsourcing more. I outsource the editing of my YouTube videos. I outsource some of the organization of my wedding films. Lifesaver, like so much time, so many days of editing that I would normally be wasting have been saved. And it is fantastic. Fantastic, did I just say that? Anyways, yeah, fantastic. Um, Julio says, when color grading, does order of adjustment layers matter on Premiere? I know it does in DaVinci, but not sure if the same rules apply for Adobe. So yeah, it, like if you have different adjustment layers on your timeline, like the, the whatever is below is always gonna be affected by whatever is above. So yeah, you're gonna need to be careful with your ordering there because if you do something, uh, like you change your exposure in the first one and then you add like a grading in the second one, that's gonna affect everything below it. So keep that in mind. Um, I guess a way around, well, let's see here. How would you work around that? That'd be tough. You could, yeah, you just have to do it with that in mind and make compensate compensate for it. Um, Shree says, can you tell me about some proxy settings? What do you want to know? Like proxies are great. They're really great. Um, I've been using, if you watch my 2022 update for Premiere Pro, um, ProRes is now on Windows and on Mac in Premiere, and it's fantastic. It's something I wish the DaVinci had, and it, it it bums me to no end that you can't export ProRes on Windows directly out of DaVinci. I'm like, no, they need to add this. Premiere added it, and it's wonderful. I know that they probably want, you know, Apple probably wants a crap load of money for it, so that's why it probably hasn't happened. Uh, Mark and Amalia, remember Matflat for 8-bit. Thanks again for that phase. Oh, yeah, dude. There's still people that use it. I still get people messaging me all the time, like, I still use Matflat. I'm like, you could use 10-bit now if you wanted to. Like, you could use S-Log. It's pretty cool. Oh, man. Um, Gilded Heart says, I've been looking into booking your membership. Do you go over marketing and branding and how to send the right messages to your clients? Yeah, um, open book. If you want to book a coaching call, literally we'll tell you whatever you want to know. No you secrets. Oh, mentorship. Oh, me they, oh sorry. I don't want to confuse people. Sorry, mentorship. They've been looking to booking mentorship. I'm just like mumbling a lot today. In my defense, I scripted four YouTube videos today. That was all I did today was just like script videos. I wrote like 30 pages. And like I know 30 pages doesn't sound like a ton, but whenever it's like, well, maybe it does to some people, but it's like a lot of really technical, heavy stuff. So it's a lot of research in addition to that. So my brain's a little fried, but I was like, let's do a live stream. This will be fun. Please buy this course and we can hang out and talk. That'd be cool. Oh, man. Um, yes, but seriously, uh, Gilded Heart, cover everything, everything you want to know. Literally, yeah. Talk to a lot of people about marketing and branding. The Taylor's Film and Photo. Hey, Matt, thanks for all the great content. I'm on a Mac. Should I be exploring ProRes 422? What the devil is it? Um, yes, you definitely should be exporting ProRes 422. ProRes... 422 in particular is what is known as an intermediate codec. So basically it's something that you would either like, say you like film in your, with your camera with a different picture, like whatever compressed picture profile you have. Let's say you have uh, the Sony FX30, which I happen to have right here because I finally got my hands on one. Yes, videos incoming about that. And let's say that this films in like the H.265 video codec. That's a very compressed codec, harder to edit with. So you can then transcode all of your footage that you filmed with this camera into ProRes, which is gonna give you a video file that's gonna be the same video quality. It's not gonna lose any video quality whenever you transform it into ProRes. It's not also gonna gain any video quality, but it is gonna be smoother and easier for you to play back in your video editing software, which is great. And there are a lot of different flavors of ProRes, and you can even export your video in ProRes and upload it to YouTube or Vimeo if you wanted to. That's an option, but um, yeah. Play around with ProRes. ProRes is great. Big fan of ProRes. Uh, Dylan says, I'm sub subscribed to the email as well. Awesome. Um, Jacob Hakobayan. Hakobayan? Hakobayan. Hope I'm getting that right. When trying to link proxies to 4K files, 
proxy files don't relink automatically since like two years ago with newer versions of Premiere. Wonder if they will ever fix it. Interesting. So usually they should relink automatically. Are you using the newer workflow that I covered in my 2022 proxy workflow video or using the old workflow? Check that out. Let me know because that could be the issue. Milad Karim says, Matt, can we expect more A7R5 videos? Please say yes. I'm thinking of buying it and there are barely any videos. Um, yes, you can. I've asked Sony if they can send me one so I can make a review of it. Um, keeping in mind that it is a more photo centric camera, I'm pretty low on the totem pole. Like I was low on the totem pole for the FX30. They're like, hey, it's already out. It's been out for like a month. You want this thing finally? I was like, oh, thank God. Okay, good. Um, Cause I was thinking about, I literally considered like buying one if I couldn't get my hands on it. But thankfully it's here now. But same thing with the A7R5. It's not due out until I think like it's before the end of the year, but I don't know when it's gonna come out. So like nobody even, it's not available at retail yet. Like you can't just go out and buy it. So I know that they have like a limited amount of A7R5s in the wild. So yes, I do want to review it. And a lot of people, I get comments on, from people that are like, oh, why would you review it? It's a photo camera, like, but it shoots 8K. And it's like pretty compelling in terms of features, especially whenever you consider that it's dramatically cheaper than buying an A1. So uh, yeah, I, I definitely wanna make a review of it and stay tuned. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later, but it all depends on when Sony says, you get one for one week, have a good time with it, and you gotta send it back, and I'm like, okay, do as much as I can. Oh man, uh, let's see here. Um, Taylor's filming photo, thank you for your Sony a7S III camera setup profile, saved us hours, you are welcome. So glad, so glad. Um, Funky Town Media, check your DMs on IG, please. Okay, I will check them after this. I'm so sorry. I, I, I couldn't find a message from them. Rachel says she looked for you and she couldn't find you. Maybe they're in the message requests or something yeah, like that. called something else. Is that your name on Instagram, Funky Town Media? Let me know. I have, I'm going to warn you now, okay? I get just a stupid amount of Instagram messages ever since I started posting reels all the time, and it's a little obnoxious. Like, I try to get to the ones that are like, legitimate from people that are asking for help or like talking to me and then there's a just so many like rando brands now i said i had some guy that was asking me like he was nice and fair like hello nice to meet you i was like what are you trying to sell like immediately and i look in his page and it's all crypto i'm like yeah he's gonna try to get me into crypto nah i'm good <laughs> anyways um yeah so i have to like filter out there a little bit um let's see here Zavas, I love DaVinci Resolve, but wish I could use Premiere too expensive for me. I think you're fine on DaVinci Resolve. A lot of people are switching from Premiere to DaVinci. So yeah, I don't know many people are switching back. Stanton is here. Oh, brother, Stanton with his beautiful Faroe Island footage. If you guys are not following Stanton, Stanton's got some great videos. Highly recommend giving him a follow. Just search for the name Stanton, Stanton Giles or um, Giles, if you want to call him that. He loves being called Stanton Giles. That's one of his favorite, favorite things. Um, but yeah, he's got a lot of cool stuff and he's got a great Patreon. So check that out if you film weddings. Um, he said, oh, hey, Matt slash roommate. Yeah, so me and Stanton, we'd never met before. And then we went to Venture Workshop together in uh, October and it was literally they're like, we get there and like, hey, by the way, you and Stanton are roommates. I'm like, I've never even met this guy. And we're sharing a bed, like not a bed, but like a room together with beds next to each other. And I was like, cool. All right. No big deal. What's up, man? And so we had a great time. The room might have smelled like a high school locker room after we left because we're both just smelly dudes. But we had a great time. Anyways. Um, yeah. Stan's really awesome. Bible prophecy made clear. That's a name right there. It says, can you do a video on having two 3090 TIs linked together and the benefits? Um, I can tell you um, from experience, having done two 1080 t 1080s that I linked together, um, I think it's a big headache. I don't think there's any benefits from like a video editing standpoint really. And I know that with the 4090s now, Nvidia just got rid of SLI completely and they don't even let you link them together or care. So, I mean, if you want, you can do it, but I don't think you're gonna get any benefits. You might get some for gaming. When I had it, it just caused a lot more crashes and I didn't like dealing with it. So I got rid of one of my 1080s. Of course I sold my, ten, my one of my 1080s before the uh, um, 
GPU boom when I could have made like $2,000 for it, I sold it like three months before. And so I made, I think like $400. And I was like, could have could have sold that for a lot more money. Dang it, oh well. I, I, I sold it to a friend of mine. He was very happy. So hey, we're all, it's all good here. And the, my other 1080 is still chugging along. So we're good. Anyways, um, let's see here. Skylight says, which is better for color grading, Adobe Premiere or DaVinci? Um, I'm gonna say DaVinci, considering DaVinci was sort of a color grading software from the start. But that said, I do think that there is an intuitiveness and an easiness to Premiere because they went with easy, simple sliders for a lot of it, very similar to editing photos, which I think is a real strength, especially for beginners. DaVinci's great, but you have to learn a node-based editing workflow, which is a lot more to consider. It's just a lot more. Once you learn it, it's great, but it takes a while. So what, I, what I'm saying here is I think that they're both really good. I think that DaVinci is definitely significantly more advanced, especially whenever it comes to tracking and other features. But it, yeah, if you're a beginner, Premiere is cool too. Um, and I do cover how to color grade in my video editing unlocked course, which is linked down below and only available for a few more hours. If you wanna check it out, click the link down there. It's got a 60 day money back guarantee. You can try it out. There's payment plans, all kinds of good stuff. Cool, Hugo says, greetings from Chile. Yes, we have fans in South America. Thank you. Never been to Chile, wanna go. Mm. I like to eat chilies. Uh, D DWV Films, I found exporting a master as DNX HR and then encoding MP4 files from that seems to give the best results. This is definitely rec directly recommended by the Adobe head of Codex. Cool, yeah, nothing against DNXR. Totally, like that's another good, um, very similar to ProRes 422, or technically I think HR would be more similar to like 4444. Um, anyways, yeah, um, DNX is just another great option. Uh, Chronicle Production, hey brother, much love from Canada. Hello, nice to nice to see Canadians in the chat. Funky Town Media says, yes it is. The video is uploading, still need feedback on wedding video before sending it out. Okay, so I don't think Funky Town Media may have messaged me on Instagram yet, but they will okay. eventually, hopefully. Let me know. Uh, if not, send me an email. I'm terrible at Instagram DMs, but if you send me an email, at least it goes to my inbox and I'll, it'll be there. Just a thought. And Erico says, hello, Matt. Hello, and Erico. Is your icon a me? Your icon looks like a Nintendo me character. That's cool. Tamer FRS, Matt, best man on earth. Thank you. Very nice of you. Ah, oh, crap. Vu is here. This guy. Guys, if you aren't following Vu, he's one, he's one of the funniest people. I love him. Even though he lied to me and told me that he was related to another mutual friend of ours. And it wasn't true. And I totally believed him because I'm a sucker. So yeah, check out Vu. Vu's cool. Vu's got some cool stuff. And he says I should use DaVinci. I'm learning DaVinci, okay? We're working on it, okay? You think you'd, DaVinci, Rome wasn't built in a day. DaVinci wasn't learned in a day. Watched a lot of tutorials today. Diana Guzman, Photographia. Hi, Vu. Hey, man. See, you got fans, Vu. Look at this. Diana's saying hi to you. He's a married man. Be careful. And Erico, do you use preset animations or you prefer making your own? How about transitions presets or making your own? Uh, yeah, I talk about this some in the video editing on lock course because I, personally, I, I think that handmade is kind of the way to go for preset animations and things. That said, I, I also am a big, I'm also very wary of animations. And what I mean by that is that it's so easy to just go download animations and throw them on your video and be like, look, it looks professional, but it really doesn't. It kind of, it gets cheesy and it just kind of adds unnecessary junk to your video and it makes it harder to watch. So yeah, I, I'm not actually a huge fan of most presets. I'm not saying I won't use them, but same with transitions. I'm just not a, like, I think minimal is better. Look to Hollywood, look how they do things. Um, the Taylor's Film and Photo, do you have any ideas about how to supercharge our workflow? We're often passing projects between two Macs and two different rooms. Is it NAS time? It might be, it might be. I think you might also be interested in like, I know DaVinci just added cloud editing, so both of you could be editing like the same project, which could be really interesting. But yes, NAS is the way to go. Um, fun fact, I do have a NAS in the other room that I'm working on a video about, uh, it's just, I don't have all the parts yet. Um, we're working on getting all the parts and the hard drives. But once that's there, then a video will come. So yeah, it's 
Give it a month or two. I don't know. Supply chain difficulties and all that. Malad Karim says, thanks for reply regarding the A7R5. My next question is, would you consider making a video with Gerald? I think your fun, easy attitude with Gerald's strict approach would make for great chemistry. Thank you. And DW Films became a member. Thank you, DWV Films. Um, it's funny because it's like the... <laughs> I love Gerald. Gerald's one of the funniest people. And it's just so, it, yeah, he's great. We hung out in New York a good amount. And he made me walk like six miles. It was brutal. But I love Gerald. And he's really great. And that'd be a lot of fun. The main difficulty is he's in Canada and I'm in Texas. So it's not a quick drive. But Gerald did give me his phone number after I asked. Begged a little bit. But that's fine. Yeah. So I could text him sometimes. Like, What's up? Anyways, Gerald's cool. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Jacob says, you got my name right. Matt, the Canon C70 can shoot proxies in 4K at the same time. Newer Premiere versions since like two years ago don't relink proxies automatically. So if you're, if you're filming in proxies and in 4K, watch my Sony 4K video because your linking issues maybe have to do with the way that your videos are, that your proxy files are titled. And if you title the videos properly, which I cover in my, it's a turn for Sony, but it'll work for, canon as well that may help you cool um do it media says hi from toronto lots of canadians here isabella west is here hello so great to have you Ooh, julio donating 10 buckaroos thanks buddy you're awesome you're great this is great we're having a good time oh man and erico says oh vu is here sheesh i watch his videos pretty cool yeah he's pretty cool i guess yeah he's he's all right Oh, man. Uh, Zavas says, the thing I don't like most about DaVinci is the UI isn't customizable like Premiere. I agree. It definitely took some getting used to with DaVinci where you can't just move all the panels around and put them wherever you want. DaVinci's more like, no, here's where they are. You better learn where they are. And that's both a blessing and a curse. I think it's a blessing because if you ever get stuck, you're like, well, I know where the panel is. It's right over here. If you're watching a tutorial, you know where the panel is. But at the same time, once you get more advanced and you want to customize something, you can't do it. This is something I spend a lot of time talking about in my Premiere Pro course, Video Editing Unlocked, which is linked down below. Because whenever you're, one of the biggest ways to save time in Premiere is to really customize the interface. You make it faster, you make it smoother, you make it easier to work with. And so in this course, a, a chunk of it is me teaching you my incredibly streamlined setup and workflow complete with templates and presets that you can get set up very quickly. So that way, if you want to start editing even faster in Premiere and customize it, the video editing unlock course will show you how to do that. Link down below if you want to check it out. Cool. Um, let's see here. Julio Pereira says, how in depth do you go on color grading in your editing course? That's my biggest struggle right now. Also, any other course you might recommend when it comes to color? Um, I go pretty decently in depth. Like I go through all the tools, I show you how they work, and then I kind of release you into the wild. So there's not necessarily case studies where I'm going into, hey, here's exactly how I would color grade all this specific stuff. If you wanted something like that, I would check out my wedding film framework course, which is literally me color grading an entire wedding film from beginning to end, so that's more in depth. But in this case here, I think that, um, I think that the video editing lock course would still be really helpful for you for video edit, for color grading, especially if you don't fully understand all the tools, etc. cetera. Um, let's see here, Jacob Hakobayan says, DaVinci or Final Cut Pro has a second editing option to Premiere as I've had enough of this bugged program, honestly. Completely understand that. There's a lot of people jumping ship right now, which, hey, here I am like selling a course about Premiere. I understand that. But whenever you look at the numbers, I think Premiere still has over half of the editing market. So still making stuff for hopefully a good chunk of people out there. And who knows, maybe there'll be some Da Vinci stuff in the future. Um, I am trying to learn the program. So we're getting there. You're going to see more Da Vinci tutorials though. Anyways, um, as a second option, it, it, if you're coming from Premiere, DaVinci is going to be an easier jump because you don't have to learn the magnetic timeline and things like that. Um, but they're both solid options. So up to you. I would personally do DaVinci, which I am doing DaVinci. So you can just be like me if you want. It's fun. Grow a beard too. It's great. Great fun. Because I can see your little icon here. It doesn't look like you have one. Your tiny little, tiny little picture. 
Um, Rob Ceballos says, from Australia, I love your work and personality. You're a natural-born teacher. Thank you. None of my teachers in school said that, but here we are, teaching people. Teaching them. Uh, Isabella says, what do you do when the couples don't give you any feedback after delivery, after delivering the HL? After delivering the film? Like, what do you do if the couples don't give you any feedback? Um, if the couples already paid me and... I'm like, hey, here's your video, and they don't reply. That's fine. They're probably busy. Hopefully they watched it. But, yeah, including your contract, something about, like, hey, you have two weeks to tell me if anything's wrong, and then it's done, and I can kind of cover you. And then you're just like, here's your video, done. And ideally you want the couple to come back to you or any client to come back to you and be like, oh, my gosh, we love it. There's no changes. It's all great. But if they aren't, like, if they don't reply at all, not a terrible thing either. Um. DWV Film says, yeah, the DaVinci UI doesn't work using three 32-inch monitors. That's that's a lot of monitors there, for sure. I think there's definitely some scaling issues, especially in Windows, in regards for DaVinci that I've run into, so I have to do some workarounds for that. But I will say DaVinci looks really good on an ultra-wide monitor. So, yeah, just a thought there. Um, glad Jacob's here with the other Canadian viewers. Jao Fernandez, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I use Final Cut Pro, just love it. Every year it's getting better and saves every step I make. You have to try it. Yes, whenever I eventually buy a Mac, then I'm sure I will try Final Cut. Just haven't done it yet, but yeah, Final Cut's very well loved. People love Final Cut. No complaints about Final Cut here. Mmm. I, I got a chicken pot pie in the oven, just so you guys know. It's very exciting. It's gonna be done soon. I'm thrilled. Rachel's like, you could do one of those mukbang things where you eat on camera. I don't think I'm going to do that. But I could. could be fun. I don't know. Um, David Dodry says, there's a whole module on color grading. Yes, there is in my course. Which, hey, you know what? Let's just do, should we do, should we do this? Can we do this here? Look at this here. So here's the course if you want to check it out here. Okay, so this is the, the page for the course. But you want to know what's covered in it, what you got to learn. Because here's the timer here. You got six hours and 21 minutes, midnight Pacific time. This thing is going away. So if you want it, we got some stuff here, but let's talk about what's in this thing here, okay? Um, we're talking about setting up and optimizing Premiere, getting it working fast. That's module one. Then we're going to talk about importing and editing footage, learning cuts, transitions, the sequences you need, keyboard shortcuts, audio mixing and repair, with presets, color correction and grading. Hey, you want color correction and grading. This is literally everything you need to know about it here. Um, exporting in 4K and HD, so how to export. And then in addition, Premiere in 2022, they released a big update, which changed the entire interface, which I'm sure you've probably seen if you've been editing. It's a big pain. If you don't know how to deal with it, you don't wanna deal with it, this is gonna show you how to work with it quickly and easily. So yeah, if you wanna check it out. Lots of good stuff in this course. Gotta teach you everything you need to know about how to quickly and easily edit videos in Premiere Pro. It's linked down below if you wanna check it out. We'll close that down now. What else you got? What else you guys got? I'm sharing secrets here. What secrets you wanna know about video editing? Here to answer them. <laughs> um, let's see here, PP says, hard to jump on DaVinci for the amount of edits I've already made in Premiere. I would've lost everything basically. Totally understand that. Like. I don't necessarily ever see myself le canceling my like Adobe subscription, as sad as that sounds. Like I gotta pay this thing forever. But in terms of the amount of older projects that I have that I still have to access fairly often, it's a lot. So it'd be really tough to transition away from that. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I could do it. So yeah, something to, something to keep in mind there. And also I make like still make tutorials about Premiere. So it's still it's still worth being paid for for sure. Um, let's see here. Ian Vegas says, I need tips on reducing grain in my videos. Like I have a decent lighting setup and shoot on PP7. Um, so if you're still getting grain in your videos here, um, first question would of course be like, what ISO are you filming at? Are you filming at the camera's native ISO? Um, which if you're filming, at, that's used like ISO 800 on a, I assume you're on a Sony because you said PP7. Um, but would love to know like what your what your camera setup is as far as uh, ISO. Um, 
if you are filming an S-Log3, you might, typically you have to film even brighter and then you bring the exposure down. I have a whole tutorial about that. Uh, otherwise, if it's still noisy, I have another tutorial about cleaning that up. Neat Video is a plugin and it's about a hundred bucks, I think might be 120. It's fantastic for cleaning up um, noisy footage. It's definitely a, like a bit of a resource hog, but it's really helpful. Malad Cream says, I feel like the only one here representing London as it's 1.36 a.m. Wow, look at you staying up late. Good job. I would not do that personally. I am, I'm like, I now that we have like a child and another child on the way, I'm like, is it 10? Oh, crap, I got to go to bed. Like, it's already 7.40 here, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to bed soon. Okay, cool. Um, Anerico says, hey, Matt, I'm just starting with my YouTube channel. Tips on the first set of videos with less than 100 subs. Well, I, I, Anerico, I, I really need to know, first of all, like, what are you, what like, what do you want to focus your channel on? Like, what do you want it to be about? Because I literally made YouTube videos for 10 years before I saw success. I uploaded my first YouTube videos in like 2006 and it wasn't till December 2015 that I ever saw success. So nearly like nearly 10 years. Um, but whenever I realized that I need to find a niche and I need to find something to focus on, that's whenever I finally started to see success on the platform. So if I was you, I would definitely heavily consider what kind of videos you want to make and then make more videos about that. Uh, Poet of the Fallen, any advice on removing objects from a moving gimbal shot in Premiere Pro or After Effects? Ah, I think the chicken pot pie is done. My alarm went off. Can we get it? Will you check it? Just yes. check it. I don't want to I don't want to eat it yet. It's going to be really hot. Uh, let's see here. Removing objects from a moving gimbal shot? That's tough. Um, it the content to wear fill in After Effects is pretty good. Otherwise though, ugh, that's going to be tough. Like hire somebody on Fiverr to do it. Like that's a cheap way to do it. You'll get a pro that can do it for a good price. That's a little secret there. If you want to know the real editing secrets, or you want to know my real editing, se real editing secrets, hiring people on Fiverr to do things for you you don't want to do. A lot of people do it. It's a good secret. Um, anyways, Loop God TV. I got, if you got to say it like that, Loop God. What are your thoughts on LumaVision? Have you used it before? LumaVision? What is LumaVision? Am I crazy? Why am I not? Luma Fusion? Oh, okay. You just misspelled it. I was like, Luma Vision? Luma Fusion. Um, I think it's cool. I've not used it before. That said, though, DaVinci Resolve is about to have like a full fat version of DaVinci on the iPad. And I feel like that's going to eat Luma Fusion's lunch. Just potentially here. Nothing gets Luma Fusion, but DaVinci's pretty, pretty intense. The Taylor's Film and Photo. Matt, what are your other favorite types of pie? I like a good cheesecake. I like a good cherry pie. I'll tell you, uh, when Rachel and I got married, we had pie instead of cake at our wedding reception. That's how you got to do it. Joe Fernandez, what do you say to your clients when they want to change the music in the video? Changing music is like changing the entire video story. Um, you got to work in advance. There comes a baby bump into the into the screen here. Yes. Uh, if you're going to like talk to your clients ahead of time, figure out what sort of music they want, what music they like, what their preferences are. And then you choose music from that. And that will save you 99.9% .9 of the time from ever having to change the music. If you have to change the music, that means that you messed up in the pre-production process somewhere. And if you got to change it, then you change it. And it sucks and you got to do it. But if it's coming from them and you've already clearly spoken to them and explained what they're getting and they know the song and they want to change it after the fact, charge them for it. But if you screwed up, then you got to just eat it and do it. P. Edward Photography, I'm a Nikon photographer that's been following you for years. I did two weddings with your tips. Do you have any tips on getting colors right in Premiere? Um, yes, that's awesome. Nikon, there you go. Um, side note here, Nikon is, it's not like an NDA camera or anything like that, but Nikon is sending me a camera. They reached out find, like randomly like, hey, you want to try this camera? I was like, yes, cool. So yeah, maybe a little, uh, maybe a little Nikon video coming, maybe a little Nikon love coming here soon. Weird, right? Nikon, who knew? Anyways, um, tips for getting colors right in Premiere. Um, it's really going to depend on like what your what your goal is in Premiere. And I talk about this in the video editing a lot course. Like, what sort of colors do you want? Because getting colors right 
right is a very subjective term. Like, do you want your colors to look realistic? Do you want them to look dark and moody? Do you want them to look happy? You want them to look sad? Are you looking going for realism? Are you going for hyper realism? Like there's there's so many options there. Um I personally like my color presets. Who is Matt Lutz? I use them on everything that I make. So you could literally download those, use those in your videos, and that might get your colors right. Um, otherwise though, Premiere is gonna have a lot of, has a lot of tools, especially if you learn the hue versus hue tool and like how to shift your hues. If you learn the secondary color correction tool, that is huge because that tool is going to then enable, and I talk about this all in the video at a lot course, that, that tool is gonna enable you to shift specific colors in your image and really dial them in properly and it's wonderful. So if you wanna check out the video editing unlock course, it's linked down below, it goes away tonight. So if you want it, you gotta get it now. And hey, there's a 60 day money back guarantee. You can literally buy the course. You can watch all of the color grading module. And if you learn something cool, you can keep it. If you watch it and you're like, I didn't learn anything or you don't like it for any reason, cool, I'll give you your money back. Just send me an email, no big deal. Um, yeah. Cool. Eubank says, where can we see your latest wedding films? Let's review your videos. Oh man. If you go, if you go back on my YouTube channel, they are, they are in there. I haven't posted one in a while, but we, I will tell you that we literally delivered one last week. So there are wedding videos. The issue is that I'm holding onto some of them because I have BTSs that I have to make for them. And it's like, BTSs are massive. Like it just takes so much time to make them. And so that's one reason that they haven't been posted in a while, plus COVID, all that fun stuff. Anyways, um, more are coming is what I'm saying here. Uh, let's see here. Sir, get entertainment. Have been using Panasonic S1, but I want to sell and buy the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. Which camera can you recommend for me? Well, it sounds like you want to go with the Blackmagic, so go with that. I mean, if you want to, you got to rig out that camera a lot, but hey, you're getting raw, and it's cool. It's really cool. Um, personally, I, I would... Uh, if you want something in a similar price range, the uh, Sony FX30 is pretty fantastic. Like just a killer camera. Cannot wait for you guys to see my review about this thing. It's pretty great. Taylor Swift photo should be in bed, but MJ's on the tube. I'm sorry, I'm keeping you up late. PP says, did you ever use Adobe Podcast AI to clean up audio? I saved a mic fail by taking audio from the camera. Adobe Podcast AI, have I even heard of that? Okay, podcast AI. Oh, no, I haven't done this stuff here. Okay. Interesting. When did they announce this? 2021. I somehow missed this. Cool. All right, I'll look at that in a little bit. That's neat. Okay. Um, let's see here. Where do you recommend getting wedding contracts from? Oscar Lins asks. Um, I recommend that you talk to a lawyer about that because, and talk to like a local lawyer because you ideally want something that's drawn up for you like in your area. If you want like a template or something like that, um, I think the guys over at Tropic Color, Jacob Owens, I think they have a set of template packs. It's pretty cheap. You could check that out. Or if you want something better, um, there's the legal page. The, the words the, legal, and then P-A-I-G-E. It's a woman's name. She has some contract templates as well that are really good. Uh, Malad Kareem says, will this video still be available after the live? Yes, it will be. So if you need to go to bed, you can go to bed. But check out video at an unlock before you go to bed because by the time you wake up, it ain't gonna be available for sale anymore unless you just take a nap for like an hour or two. Then it'll still be there, but you should still check it out. Diana Guzman says, what are your thoughts about the Canon R6 Mark II for wedding video? I think it's really, really cool. I think that they've done some really good stuff with it. It looks like from the stuff I've seen, they've fixed a lot of the issues that like the R5 had and the R6 had with overheating. Um, so I'm really glad to see that. That said, I feel like they did burn some people. So it's going to take a while for people to like get back into Canon. And also I don't love at all what Canon's doing with their RF lenses where they're basically blocking third parties from making RF lenses, which is why you don't see all of the other lenses available. Like if you go to Sony, there's like, you have you have Sony lenses, but of course you also have Tamron and you have Sigma and you have a billion different random companies, Astrohori, um, Lawa, all these companies making E-mount lenses. And then Canon's over here at the RF mount like, you want our lenses? Then you can have our lenses, otherwise, sorry. And you're like, well, that's rude. Let other people make stuff, dang it. So it's kind of a pain. Um, just think about that if you're thinking about the R6. Like, think about the ecosystem that you're buying into. That's the big thing here. Like, what lenses do you have to buy? How are you going to build out this? Is there enough for you? Because, yeah, there's some limitations there. 
Um, DWV Films, have you had a look at the new Musicbed licensing service for popular tracks? It's called Musicbed Rights and Clearances. Yes, I have. Um, I talked to someone about this recently, actually. It's pretty cool. So you can literally uh, reach out to Musicbed and say, hey, um, I want to license uh, It's Me by Taylor Swift, like that new song she has. Bam. Like you can reach out to them and say, hey, I want to license it. And the, they will literally reach out to the labels and like work a deal as the go-between to get you a license for that song. Um, warning for you though, uh, songs are still really expensive. Like I know that things have gotten cheaper in terms of like the music licensing sp space where you can have a music bed subscription and suddenly you're able to download an unlimited amount of music and it's really, really awesome. Um, yeah, that uh, that's only with like the licensable music, okay? Like if you want a top 40 track, for example, and it has not been negotiated, whoo, um, you're looking at spending a good chunk of money, I'll say. And it depends on like what your use is for. If you're like, I want to use it for a wedding video, okay? Um, but like if you want to use it for like a commercial or something like that, oh, oh, strap in, baby. You better hope your client's got a big budget because it's crazy. Um, but yeah, that's the music world. Welcome to it. It's just nuts how that stuff is. But it's super cool that Musicbed is offering this as a service and enabling people to do that. I think that's so cool. Um, Premiere Production, can you recommend whom to use to outsource your video editing? Yes, I use a company called Archaeus Creative, A-R-C-H-A-I-U-S, creative.com slash who is Matt. Go to that site and they will help you out. And they're really, really awesome. Ian Viegas might have to get give neat video a try. Also, have you played the new God of War yet? Um, I, yeah, try out neat video. New God of War, I want to play it. I don't have a PS5. I, I, I've thought about buying one. I've been so close, but it's kind of hard to find one. And then they were available, but I was like, oh, it's $500. And I have like my PC that I edit on, but I can also game on it. And I have Xbox Game Pass. And so I haven't like bought a game in like a year. A year and a half now it's just been a long time since i've even bought a game and man like i feel like give sony a year and they're gonna release ragnarok on pc probably and then i can just play with what i already have and so i'm like do i want to pay 500 dollars to be able to play the game now 500 plus 570 because you gotta buy the game too or do i just wait a year and just try not to get spoiled for a year and then get to play it then just a thought just a thought Anyways, uh, Surrogate Entertainment, MJ, have been using Panasonic S1. Didn't you already ask that? I thought I did that. Okay. Um, Diana Guzman says, does anyone know a wedding film editing business like No Backlog or Arceus Creative in Mexico? Um, not in Mexico, but Arceus will work with you. They're in the U.S., but they'll sit, you can send them stuff. Same way with No Backlog. Like they, Everything's online now. You can send them a Dropbox link of all your files if you want to. Um, Oscarlands, do you use HoneyBook or anything similar? No, I do not. I just use literally like um, Google spreadsheets, uh, um, like, you know, like Excel and uh, to keep track of things and email. And honestly, um, I have a really incredibly talented, amazing wife who is very organized and she handles so much of the organization. It's wonderful. DWV Films, do you have pie in Australia? Um, did you have pie? Yes, meat pies. Yeah, I had a meat pie. It was delicious. Fantastic. Dan says, Matt, congrats. Is that your second child as Rachel has already said in the chat? Yes. Baby girl number two. Crazy. Oh, well. Um, Thomas Gonzalez says, how to get bigger clients? I have a really good portfolio, but how do you negotiate price? Um, a lot of it comes down to two things. Um, being willing to, like charge significantly more so like getting over like the mental hump of like can i charge more should i do it and just doing it because i've had success with that before where i had a client that i was like i don't really know if i want to do this here but i'm just going to charge them like a lot more than i normally would and they were like cool yeah we'll take it and i was like oh well cool okay then i guess i'll get paid more um so that's the first thing is like mental block and then as far as like getting a good portfolio or negotiating price i think that if you already have the good portfolio and you want bigger clients, a lot of it comes down to like 
getting your foot in the door with one big client. Like if you if you have a portfolio of big clients, you can usually get more big clients, but if you don't have a portfolio of big clients, you're gonna need to get your foot in the door with like, try and do something for a big client. Maybe for cheaper, but then pivoting that into charging more to other people. Did I lose my voice here? <clears throat> mm, anyways. Uh, uh, let's see here, Diana says, what are your thoughts about the Canon R6? Didn't I say that already? Okay. Am I crazy? Am I just repeating myself? I don't know. <laughs> Hayden's here. I'm thinking about buying the new Canon T3i. Good idea. Yeah, bro. Just do that. I know that you, like, I think you should find somebody. If you guys, I think Hayden still has a, a, a Z Cam E6 he's trying to sell. If you guys want to buy that, somebody should buy that. But um, I, alternative option, Hayden, you could trade the Z Cam for a T3i. Just saying here, genius idea, classic, classic move. Um, Diana's asking if the R6 fixes the overheating. I believe so, from what I've read. And Erico, your keyboard sounded like an enthusiast. What's your keyboard, Matt? Yeah, I've got a uh, DOS keyboard. It's pretty cool. It's hardwired. I wish it was wireless. I don't even know if they make a wireless one, but I really like it. It's very clicky. Mmm. Love a good clicky keyboard. Love clicking away, clacking away. Rachel hates it. It's so loud. She's like, she likes her little quiet. And I'm over here like, but I've heard, oh gosh, what was that meme or something like that? Like every, every man's keyboard is like, and every woman's is like really quiet. That's, yeah, that's our relationship there. Anyways, um, thank you, Taylors. Had a good time hanging out with you guys. Little Bacon Bear, you're late. What are you late for? We're still here. Ain't going nowhere. How long have I been going for anyways? I don't even know. Is this thing going to tell me? Doesn't tell me there. Doesn't tell me there. I have no way to know how long I've been streaming. Perfect. Just an unlimited amount of time. Oh, there it is. 46 minutes. Okay, we'll go for a little bit longer here. I've got time. You got like 15 minutes, okay? Then I got to eat. I get to eat some chicken pot pie. Mmm, so excited. Poet of the Fawn says, the company I work for uses GH5s and I find the camera super unreliable when I have to use the autofocus. It seems to hunt and loses focus randomly. Is this a me problem or a known issue? Um, it's, a, it's a known issue. The autofocus of the GH5 is notorious for being just like you described. Um, hunting and losing focus randomly. Yeah, it's, it has a contrast-based autofocus system. It's not amazing. Hopefully Panasonic at some point in the future will remedy that, but yeah, um, just get used to manual focus or switch camera manufacturers, unfortunately. Otherwise though, the GH5 is fantastic. It's just that. Anybody got any other like editing questions or sharing editing questions? I'll answer your camera questions too, I don't care. But I was just thinking about it and I was like, crap, I gotta tell you guys about video editing unlocked and I like pivoting to that from your editing questions. If you want to check out video editing unlocked, it's linked down below. Uh, the uh, how much time we got? Y'all got six hours and forty-seven seconds to sign up before it disappears, and you ain't gonna be able to get it till uh, next year sometime, which is a long ways away. I know it's like two months, but like not at the start of next year. It's gonna be a while. So if you want it, check it out now. Um, let's see here. Milad says, I think Canon only has four prime RF lenses, so unless you want zooms, you really need to think about that ecosystem. I know they're adding more all the time. They started at 135. They're adding some cool stuff. Can you say that again? Alexa, stop. Mm -hmm. She heard me say something, and she got angry. I'm sorry I was rude to you. Ah, <sighs> women. Um, let's see here. Diana says, Pixie Set as a studio manager, which can help too. I've heard of Pixie Set. Haven't tried it, but yeah. That's another thing too. There's just so many options. There's Pixie Set, there's Honeybook, there's Tave. Oh gosh, there's so many. I used to use Shoot Q back in the day. It was called Shoot Q. I don't even know if they're still around, but I used them. Ivy says, with charging, people always have the mental block because they think their price is too much for their own personal budget, but the client doesn't know that, so always ask for more. Very wise words. Completely agree with that. Like you have to not think about yourself. You have to think about your client. Hayden says he will do that trade of the T3i for the Z cam. He is still having, it is still for sale. If you look up, just type Hayden Goldsworthy into you, into Google or YouTube if you want to find him. Because I don't think you can click through to people's profiles anymore. Yeah, um, yeah, go to his Instagram. He's got it for sale. He'll just go, just go buy it from. It's a cool camera. It shoots raw. It's pretty neat. Pretty darn neat. Um Diana says, off topic, what is your favorite video game or game franchise? Oh man. 
I have been playing through the Halo Infinite campaign co-op with my brother finally because I finally released that. We've been having a lot of fun. We were doing that last night till I say late. It was like 10 p.m., but late to me. Um, otherwise, uh, man, favorite video game though? What did I play a lot of? Um, what did I play? Oh gosh, two years ago. I think it was two years ago. I played through Persona 5 Royal. I must have sunk like 120 hours into that game, which is a lot for me. Like I beat the whole game and then I went back through it again on New Game Plus and played it again. Like that was just a fun game. So yeah, if you want to get into it, like I don't know, if you haven't played Persona, it's, a, it's just a fun game. It's cool. It's real cool. Um, anyways, uh, Buddy says, just like Fujifilm, contrast-based. Yes, contrast-based autofocus. We want phase detect. Hmm. Arbrick says, what Sony a7 IV S Log 3 conversion LUT do you use? Good question. Um, so I have, I use my own LUTs, who's Matt LUTs, and I offer two versions of the LUTs. If you want to check them out, whoismat.com slash LUTs. Uh, the main benefit of that is I have one version of them that is just a traditional LUT, so you have to use it, you would have to use like a different conversion LUT if you had one. Um, like from your camera manufacturer or you used uh, Gamut. They're a really fantastic LUT company run by some friends of mine. Hey, Caleb, I love you. Um, and Gamut, they make a lot of conversion LUTs. And so you could use one of theirs and then you could apply my LUT on top of it. Or alternative option, um, I also, the, if you buy the Who Is Met LUTs, there is a second version of the LUTs that is a log LUT. And so it basically is a conversion LUT paired with the color LUT. So it's going to handle all that contrast and saturation and add the LUT on top of it. It's pretty cool. So yeah, that's what I use. Um, and Erico says most underrated Premiere Pro effects, Matt. Oh man. Uh, what do I use the most here? I probably use, I use the fill left with right, which not many people know about and use. You literally, if you're like, because normally whenever I'm filming a wedding, for example, I need to uh, record from, like, a wedding house audio. And so they always send me, like, a stereo feed, and their mics are usually kind of wonky. And so I'll get, like, the left channel will be, like, twice as loud as the right channel. It's just annoying. But if you use fill left with right or fill right with left, you can literally just mirror both of uh, – it basically just it turns into a mono track, but it goes out both speakers – and it's just super clear and clean, so you're hearing clear audio through both of them. I don't know, just little stuff like that. I use I use that I use that effect all the time, especially whenever I'm editing my wedding videos. It's pretty great. And I don't know. I get people asking me like, hey, if the audio isn't right, I might just use this. They're like, what? Okay. Um, Arbrick says, because when following your S Log three color grading tutorial, the colors look a bit desaturated. Um, okay, so as far as like conversion, less stuff like that. Like I think it really comes down to like what you it's also like personal preference, right? Like if you want a little more desaturation, you can do that. If you want a little more saturation, also it depends on what your monitor looks like because I, for example, have a laptop that I've used in the past that was way more desaturated than the colors on my desktop. And I didn't even know that while I was color grading. So I had to like recolor grade the whole thing. So it could also be your screen. I don't know. Um, yeah, you gotta remember that like color grading is both an art and a science. Like it's a science in that you can like dial in things and be like, this is the perfect saturation level and it looks the perfect amount because that's what uh, science is saying and that's what all the scopes are saying, that everything is accurate. But it's also an art where you as a human are looking at it and you're like, do these colors look good? I don't know. And you got to like figure it out. So you have, you have to go by feel. You have to feel the colors. Maybe you just weren't feeling those colors. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Jao, Jao Fernandez says, weddings are a seasonal business. What do you do for the rest of the year? Also, how long do you take to edit one video? Um, it's interesting because in Texas, like most, most countries, most states around the world are all based on like, oh, winter is here. So nobody wants to get married. Like it's a uh, summer like is like super popular for weddings because it's warm. Everyone wants to get married. And then winter hits and like nobody wants to get married because there's snow and it's cold. Um, Texas is flipped in that in the summer, it's like a hundred plus degrees Fahrenheit and it's way too hot to get married. So people are like, I'm going to die in the heat. So they don't want to get married. But then once it cools off in like the mid shoulder months, then it's time to get married. So a lot of people get married. Then people get married in the winter all the time. Um, but yeah, uh, it's an interesting flip there. Um, that said, like if you don't have, uh, stuff to do for the rest of the year, um, 
I make YouTube videos. That's a lot of fun. I, I would also say um, if you want to uh, build out um, a stable of corporate or commercial clients that you can then use, and especially if they have you on retainer, that can be really good because that's going to help you get business throughout the year and fill, fill, fill in those times whenever you have low points, whenever you're not booking as many weddings. Um, and then as far as how long I take to edit one video, if we're doing like a YouTube video, I can knock that out in a day, um, half a day, something like that, a few hours. Um, but if we're talking, not like the filming and the, just the editing, but um, if we're talking like a wedding video, you're looking at more like, depending on the length of the video, it's a week to two weeks, something like that, depending on how much time I have, a child, et cetera, et cetera. Thankfully, um, I will say that outsourcing helped out a lot with that and helped me save multiple days of work because I wasn't having to do as much. It was just, oh, I was able just to focus on the important things um, of the edit, which really, really help out with that. Uh, Thol Walder says, is there any good website for graphic presets, video vec presets, and transcription transitions that don't have monthly subscription? Um, I believe that Envato, um, they have... I think it's called Graphic Hive. They've got Video River. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Envato. I gotta find their, would it just be Video? I think it's Video Hive. Um, they have, yeah, stock footage and video effects, things like that. Um, I'm pretty sure they still do sale, like individual sales of things. So you can do like motion graphics here. Yeah, you can buy, um, here's a digital logo for $12. Uh, here's 2,000 motion and text presets for 60. Here's Instagram stories, all these things. Um, yeah, um, videohive.net. Was that it? Let me make sure that was it. Hold on. Yeah, videohive.net. They're really great. Um, I've used them multiple times in the past. And if you don't want to do a subscription, it's nice because you can literally just pay like, oh, I just need one thing. It's $8. Cool. Just buy that. Use it. It's cool. Um Poet of the Fallen, I want to say thank you for answering both my questions. You are welcome, Poet of the Fallen. Please check out Video Editing Unlocked if you want to check it out. That's that's how you can show your thanks to me. Click on the link. Check it out. No, it's cool. <laughs> um, Malad Cream says, good night to you and your family. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. It was a lot of fun. Oscar Lins, do you know the best Sony picture profile that is usable with Canon? Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, so if we're talking about that, uh, you're going to want something that... Uh, it's it really the issue isn't necessarily going to be with going between cameras isn't necessarily going to be um you have two issues like you have to match the colors but you also have to match the contrast level and if you're filming in log with both cameras they have different ways that they process log and so it's a lot um you want the easy shortcut hack um there's a program called cinematch it's made by uh crap I'm blanking on the name. One of y'all can tell me in the chat. Uh, what's the company? Why am I blanking on it? Yeah, it's called, I'm just gonna, hold on. Cinematch, where is it? Uh, let's see here. Cinematch by Film Convert. That's who it is. I was like blanking here. Yeah, Film Convert makes a program called Cinematch. And the whole point of that program is to help you match up your footage between multiple different cameras. And it's pretty cool. So you can literally be like, hey, I'm filming on a Canon and a Sony, and I want this footage to look the same. And you can go click, click, and it'll go boop, boop, and it's going to make the colors the same. Magic. Witchcraft. It's so cool. So, yeah. Um, Diana says, in Mexico, everyone wants to get married. Everyone wants to get married in December, regardless of the weather. All the family's on vacation and can travel. That's, hey, I mean, hey, that's another thing to consider with weddings. You got to go, you got to get married when the family wants it. So there you go. Thanks for hanging out, Diana. You're great. Ashley Film Studio says hi. Joe Fernandez says thanks. DWV says Cinematch is the best. And I think that's about it, guys. Is this it? Yep. Okay, we're at nearly an hour. I ran out of questions to answer. Hey, if you want to check out Video Editing Unlocked, last thing here, if you're interested. Only if you're interested, okay? But if you want to check it out, it's only available for the next five hours and 49 minutes. If you want to learn, if you want your video editing to be fast and easy, if you use Adobe Premiere Pro, I've been editing videos for 11 years now on Premiere, okay? If you, I've tried out all the features, I've tried out all the settings, I've found the easiest and fastest ones. I think I need to update that actually. I think it's been 12 years now. Anyways, if you wanna do that, 
video editing unlocked, okay? If you wanna learn how to set up and optimize Premiere in an easily and repeatable way to get your largest projects organized. Secret settings to keep Premiere from slowing down. Customizing your workspaces and panels. This is huge because it's gonna save you so much time. Wanna learn about all the basics like importing footage but and editing too, but also like advanced stuff, the effects that I recommend, the sequences that I recommend, time-saving keyboard shortcuts, how to mix your audio, how to repair your audio, how to find music that works well, that is also free if you want some free music, simple and overlooked tools that repair bad audio, color correction, color grading, all that. Exporting in 4K, exporting in HD, plus all the updates that Premiere has added, that Adobe added in 2022 to help you create your projects quickly, export your projects, because they rearranged everything. If you want to learn all that, video editing unlocked. Available right now, limited time, literally five hours and 48 minutes left. And so if you click the link down in the description or click the pin comment, you can check it out. If you use the coupon code BF2022, that could stand for Black Friday 2022, that could stand for Boyfriend 2022. Who's your boyfriend? Premiere Pro. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm saying here. If you wanna sign up for it, it's pretty cool. Video editing unlocked, gonna really help you out. Yeah, uh, cool. All right, with that, y'all are really great. This has been a lot of fun. So I didn't get to answer your questions. Was there anything else here? Uh, Estres Abreu. I watch you from Brazil. Thanks for all your tricks. Let's see here. Brankids, I'm having a hard time with the Sony FX30 footage in Premiere. What do you make the starting sequence? Uh, depends on your resolution of your footage and just make that match that and the frame rate of your footage. Make it match that and you should be good. Cool. All right. Love you all. Take care. Have a good night. See you very soon. More videos coming soon. More reels coming soon. If you want, Not reels. Uh, more YouTube shorts. If you've been seeing me making those. Pretty cool. All right. See you later. Can hit in now. Bye.